Ibrahim Mamma. Eh, one in Canada to Puha. Eh, Yelkurma. The Cheka. When I started collecting artifacts in 2012, people thought I was crazy, actually. It's not very common to find a master's degree student every day going around collecting like old jute sacks, smocks, and other materials. I was always trying to explain to them that there was something really significant about the historical memories within those objects that we could somehow transform. <laughs> This piece is titled Non Rentable Encounter. I conceived the work when I was a student at the university, and it was basically me going around collecting shoemaker boxes that these young men who come from rural areas to the urban centers make them out of wooden objects that you find around. And I'm really interested in the contradictions within the box in the sense that it looks like a miniature house, but these boys sleep outside. Uh, on the streets and all that. So I was also very much interested in the sound component of it when they take out objects from it. And every morning, how they hated to call people to come and repair their shoes and all that. So this is the original studio at Red Clay that was built in 2015. Red Clay is my life's work. I live here, I work here, my studio is here. I wake up every morning here. I eat here. Yeah, I do everything here. I collected a lot of these smocks nine years ago when I was still a student at KNUST. Before they would give you these uh, materials, what they do is that they actually have to smear human excrement on it, or they actually uh, pee on parts of it in order to be able to somehow disconnect the idea of the soul from these objects. Over the last uh, nine years or more, I've been collecting various objects around the country, from the railways to smokes to other spaces. Finding artifact for me, it's a way of uh, accessing culture, a way of accessing different memories within our histories that have almost been forgotten. I have been a so this part of the archive actually composes largely of railway materials, which is coming from Ghana's history. A lot of it is coming from the late 19th century and early 20th century, like the cabinet, which was actually used by the workers at the railway for keeping their clothes, tools, and other objects. The railway sleepers, which was originally used in the construction of the first railway lines in Ghana. 
Later on, they were being removed and replaced by concrete uh, sleepers. And the old ones were being sold to women in the markets who were using them as firewood. But I was more interested in the history which was absorbed within them. Um, so this is red clay. Uh, it's just red clay. So this building is actually borrowed. The idea is borrowed from the, uh, the, the railway buildings that was made by the British back in the late 1800s. Being an artist, I'm interested in how I can borrow materials from history. Red Clay Studio is my personal studio, but it's also a place that has allowed me to be able to connect. Because people come here to see exhibitions, they come here to look at archival materials, they come here to have conversations. Can you tell me what you see? Like, what's the material made of, the work made of? And what does it smell like? It smells, and there's a smell that comes from it. Animal skin and what? But there's something else. Smell it. All of you, please come. Don't be afraid. Uh -huh. So these things that you see, these are bare sheets that the fishmongers at the coast. You realize that when they are smoking fish, they put the mesh on the fire, and then they put the fish on it, and then they put cloth over it so that it will contain the heat. Years and years and years and years of the heat, that's what translates into this. I believe this place is very important because it connects us to the past. We are able to learn more about our history, our culture, and how we can relate it to our current issues and how subsequent generations can also learn from them. This is the Parliament of Ghosts. And the Parliament of Ghosts uh, was a work originally conceived in 2019 for a museum in Manchester called the Withworth. And the idea of the Parliament was basically to take old residual things from the railways, Ghana Railways and also the Gold Coast Railways back to England to create this parliamentary form that could allow for people to re-encounter history in a very different form. After the exhibition, I decided to build the work as an architectural form as part of red clay. We are bringing soil into the space where we are going to transform it into a cornfield. I like the idea that within the course of the next couple of months, you would gradually see like a food germinating through the floor within the parliament. I fund the institution through various exhibitions that I do around the world, and also works that I produce here in the studio that are also sold to museums around the world. That money is what is used actually in the development of the institution and also its expansion. The point of bringing the airplanes here was to open up a possibility of uh, new conversations and new dialogues. So in 2017, when I was doing my residency in Berlin, I saw an airplane suspended on the Technik Museum in Berlin. Uh, which I thought was really fascinating and interesting. Of course, subsequently in 2018, when I came back to Ghana, I saw some old airplanes at Kotoka International Airport. And that was when I started thinking, oh, maybe these old airplanes could have a new function. I'm really interested in the idea that this old airplane that was abandoned to rot, suddenly we've taken out the seats from inside and the void that exists within the inside becomes this new plane in which new ideas or imaginations can be born. These kids come here to play, to learn about the histories. We do drone tech classes, uh, coding classes. The children are important because that's where the future lies. If we're able to somehow impact on a generation now, it means that the future is going to be shaped very differently. And for me, that is very important. 
how we can be able to lay seeds or plant seeds now that will sprout different flowers in the future. My love for artifacts, I think it comes back from my childhood. When I was a young boy, when you went to visit your grandfather, you realized that they had a collection of things. Sometimes it could be a collection of textiles, a collection of old plates, chinaware, whatever it was. Okay. Oh, my mom and Daniel be where I used to live. My mom and Daniel. Okay. My mom and Daniel. 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 My mom and